Hello and welcome to this basic macroeconomics revision course. I am your teacher Muhammad Nadim Sarma. Today we shall discuss inflationary and deflationary gaps. This is our third topic of this course. In this topic we shall learn about two important Keynesian concepts the inflationary gap and the deflationary gap. So let's start with the lecture. Students as you know that according to classical economists an economy is in equilibrium where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply and this equilibrium is always at full employment. Any deviation from full employment is temporary. That is, the output may increase or decrease from the output level at full employment or from potential level of output, but this deviation is for a very short time period only. Market forces come into action and correct it automatically and because of this government intervention in the economy is not needed. However, in the background of Great Depression, Keynes differed from this point and argued that economy's equilibrium that is the equation of aggregate demand and aggregate supply could be at full employment, below full employment, or even above full employment level of output. If the economy settles at an equilibrium below full employment, it creates deflationary gap, and if the equilibrium is above full employment, it creates inflationary gap. As per Keynes, in both situations government intervention is needed to correct the economy and take it back to full employment level. Now we study the deflationary gap. Students the gap between output level at full employment and output level at equilibrium when equilibrium is below full employment is called as deflationary gap. The deflationary gap happens when at full employment level aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply. The lower level of aggregate demand in an economy causes a decrease in general price level. On the business cycle this represents the situation of contraction or even recession. This could be because of lower level of economic activities or because of less government expenditures. Now let's try to understand it with the help of diagram. Let's suppose economy's full employment level is represented by point F on aggregate supply curve corresponding to YF level of output. However, at this level of output, aggregate supply is higher than aggregate demand. This results in increasing unplanned inventory investment and thus causes price levels to fall. This decrease in the prices results in a loss for firms. As a reaction, firms cut back their investment expenditures and because of multiplier effect, national income decreases many times. Finally, the equilibrium level of national income is determined where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. 
as represented by point E on the diagram. This level of output is below full employment level. Therefore, the gap represents the deflationary gap. According to Keynes, the government intervention can help economy to restore equilibrium at full employment level. Government can do this by pursuing expansionary fiscal policy or expansionary monetary policy. Expansionary fiscal policy means either government increases its expenditures or government decreases the tax rate or the government can increase the transfer payments to the public. Similarly, expansionary monetary policy includes an increase in money supply or a decrease in interest rate or policy rate. Any actions among these will cause economy's output level to increase by increasing the aggregate demand. Therefore, the economy's equilibrium will move towards full employment level of output. Now, the inflationary or expansionary gap. Students, inflationary or expansionary gap represents the gap between output level at full employment and output level at equilibrium when equilibrium is above full employment. It happens when at full employment level aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. This increased demand causes a temporary rise in price level which results in inflation. It represents the points on the business cycle when economy is expanding. The situation of inflationary gap rises when there is a rise in overall employment, there is an increase in trade activities or there is an increase in government expenditures. Let's try to understand this with the help of diagram. In this diagram, the point F represents the full employment level of the economy. The corresponding level of output is YF and at full level of at full employment level of output, we can see that aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. Therefore, the unplanned inventory investments decrease and there is a pressure on the prices to increase upward. This results in more profits to the firms and as a result, firms increase their investment expenditures. This results in increasing national income many times due to multiplier effect. Finally, the equilibrium level of national income is determined where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply which is above full employment level. The level of output above full employment level is monetary or nominal. The gap between the level of output at full employment and the level of output at equilibrium above full employment represents the inflationary gap. The policy actions that are needed to correct inflationary gaps are opposite to the policy actions that were needed to correct deflationary gap. That is, the government should adopt contractionary fiscal policy by reducing government expenditures or increasing taxes 
or by issuing bonds and securities or by reducing transfer payments. The other tool that can be adopted is contractionary monetary policy which can be applied by controlling money supply or by increasing the interest rate. That is all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we shall discuss the ISK. Please post your questions and give your feedback in comments. Also consider liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing the channel and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you and goodbye.